Hey guys, Matt here at Wrecked Brewery. We're gonna do another review for the Brewtubers Malt Experiment 2020. Uh, two left. This one is from uh, Brewmaster Jerry. Uh, he's calling it uh, Weeteron. <laughs> uh, so from the uh, Scopa Brewing Company, hope I said that correct. Um, he used a he used a, a European wheat malt is what he uh, entered. I'm not sure the uh, the manufacturer it could be you know it could be Wireman, um, you know it could be uh, Viking. I believe there's probably a couple others out there that I'm that I'm not remembering off the top of my head. Um, so I'm just going to go off of the uh, readout that I found on Wireman. Uh, hopefully I'm correct. Um, if not, it's it's a wheat malt, so they're probably not too far off. But uh, anyway, the OG of his beer was 1045, a little bit lower compared to some of the others. Uh, final gravity was 1014, ABV 4.078%. He brewed it on July the 14th, kegged it on the 29th of July, and bottled it on August the 5th. So this is an all wheat beer with the Sabre hops. So you know, moving, uh, you know, just going along with the smash style that we have here. Um, I figured it's getting close to. Uh, Fall time, it's getting close to October. I know it's still, we got, still got a month or so, but brought my pumpkin bottle open for this. Let's go ahead and get it open. A little bit of a hiss. Using the brew tuber's glass, just trying to keep with uh, tradition here with all these reviews. All right. Looks pretty clear in there, so you probably bottled it off of a keg. Uh, and this, this one ranks right up there with the, um, the pale that, um, that I reviewed. Very, very light in color. Probably one of the lightest. I don't know of between this one and that if, you know, whose was the actual lightest, but this is a very light beer. Very clear too, actually. Um, so it's, it's a really pale yellow, pale golden color. Um, you can see right through it. Gorgeous looking uh, color beer there. Now, so wheat malt um, typically can help out with uh, the body of a beer and it can help out with head retention. Um, this one, it had a small hiss, so it might have lost a little bit of carbonation in travel. It looks to be low carbonation in the glass. I see some bubbles streaming up, but not much. So that would probably explain why it has just a small cap on the top, which is dissipating pretty quickly. Uh, but yeah, I mean, other than that, definitely looks the part. So um, just going off of the Wireman uh, Pale Wheat Malt uh, as something to go by. Uh, and Jerry, you can correct me if this is the wrong uh, provider. So uh, we'll, we'll find out more there if, if that's the case. But, um, you know, it does say that the wheat malt is uh, good for you know, your conventional uh, wheat beer styles, like, like a Hefeweizen or a... Um, just a typical wheat beer. I usually like to make a, a wheat beer. Um, I try to make one every year. I either make like a Hefeweizen or I make like a cherry wheat. I really like to make my watermelon wheat. I didn't get around to making that this year. It's usually a summertime beer that I make. Um, and I, I definitely like a good wheat style beer. Uh, again, it adds very little color to the wort. So another one of those things where you can, you can build up from it to get the color and the uh, profile that you want out of it. Um, for Wireman, it does provide a robust malt sweet flavor with notes of bread, no, uh, nuts, biscuit, toffee, and light caramel. Uh, they're high in protein. Wheat typically is. Um, it does say here again, you know, it helps with the full body and it helps with the head retention as well. So let's go ahead and see what we have here. Um, already going over the visual. Definitely looks the part. Definitely looks like a, a well-crafted beer. So the smell, um, I don't expect to get too much in the aroma from a wheat beer just by just the standard wheat. So I'm definitely expecting to get a little bit of the hops out of this. And I'm, I'm certainly getting some of the Sabro uh, qualities from this. I'm probably getting, you know, I'm probably getting some of that woodsy uh, smell from it. I know, I think Sabro typically can have uh, some cedar, some pine, some mint, even in the aromas. And I, I'm definitely getting some of that, um, some of that sort of woodsy character, I think, from the, from the nose. But um, let's go ahead and give it a taste. Cheers.
Okay. Yeah, so I'm, I'm definitely getting a bit of a bready quality from it. Uh, pretty, pretty light. Definitely has a sweetness to it. And you know, after reading this, I can I could probably pick up a little bit on like a light, maybe like a light caramel type of a taste, but very slight. I might not have thought that if I read it, and I could be way off base here if, uh, if this isn't actually Wireman's Wheat. Um, but that's a good beer. Very refreshing, very nice. So this would be a nice one to put in with like a fruit. Um, like I said before, I've done I've done a fair number of wheat beers over the years, and I've typically added some sort of fruit to them. I've changed it up from all kinds of fruits, and like I said, most recently I've done a cherry wheat, and I've done a um, watermelon wheat um, pretty, regu pretty regularly. Um, I've always wanted to try like a raspberry wheat um, and mess around with some other fruits. Um, I'm trying to think, I think Gary had the uh, the, brew the blueberry wheat. I believe that's what that was, but uh, this would be a solid uh, base probably for a fruit pair. If you, you can put the fruit in there at the end of the primary or you can put it in a secondary, however you want to do it. But this is this is good. Very nice. I'm trying to think. And you can probably find something that would complement the, the Sabra hops. Or, of course, you can switch out the hops. But you're definitely getting a little bit of that Sabra quality in there. That's definitely having a chance to, to shine through a bit in this, in this wheat beer. Certainly has a little bit more of a body to it than some of the other beers that we've had in this malt experiment. And it does have a nice, does have a nice uh, mouthfeel to it. That was a very nice full beer for, for what it, for what it is. So nice job, Jerry. It's a good example of a, uh, of, you know, of a wheat uh, base. It is certainly something if anybody was, it was looking into building up a, a wheat beer of any type, this would be a good um, sort of baseline to kind of figure out what it what it might turn into uh, using this this particular malt and only using wheat. So typically when I make wheat beers, I usually add in something else. I might do 50-50 with Pilsner or even two row. Um, I, I don't think I've ever brewed with full 100% wheat, but it's nice to see that you can and it comes out nice. And I think this one has a nice dryness to it, too. I'll, I'll add that in here at the end. Because um, I've noticed uh, here, kind of dries out on the palate a little bit. It makes you want to take another sip. So, nice job, Jerry. Good example. Thanks for participating. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next review. Take care. Cheers. Have a good night.